Hi, I am Erica, and I am on staff here at New Spring. Welcome to 252 Theater Online. Welcome to 252 Theater's online service, a ministry of New Spring Church in Wichita, Kansas. Fun lives here, so get ready to have a great time and learn about a great big idea. That's right. A big idea is something God wants to do inside you to change the world around you. The biggest ideas are the big three. We hope after joining us online, you'll know that you can treat others the way you want to be treated, make the wise choice, and trust God no matter what. You'll get to experience fun games, skits, worship, and of course, a powerful story straight out of God's Word. More than a video, this is your chance to be a part of something amazing. So get your popcorn, crank up the volume, and get ready for incredible fun. It all starts in three, two, one. Anybody out there like presents? I love presents. Uh, presents are so much fun. Hey, today, I'm, I'm really thankful that Miss Riley took care of ordering these for me. It seems like it was kind of a fiasco getting them here. But we actually ordered a present for everybody in this room today. Something that's going to help you out with the story that you're going to hear. And it's right here in this box. It's a gift for everyone. So here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the person out here in the audience who is paying close attention and listening to every word who's going to come up and get to open this box in a minute so everybody can see what's inside, okay? Now, today our story actually isn't just a story. It is, we're going to be focusing on a few verses from the Bible. We've been talking about Paul and how Paul at one point had been a terrorist that opposed Jesus. But once he met Jesus, it changed his life. And he became somebody who would tell many, many people about Jesus. He would spread the gospel. He would lead churches literally all over the world. And when he was visiting other churches and in different places, he would write letters to tell the church, this is how we should do it. This is what following God is like. And so one of those letters he wrote to a church that was in a place called Ephesus. And uh, people who lived in Ephesus were called... Ephesians. So that's where we're at today. We're going to be in the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Now, uh, before I get into that, I have to say that Independence Day really is one of my favorite holidays. Really, it's a gift that we get to have freedom. Do you realize that in some countries, what we're doing right now, talking about Jesus openly, that they could be thrown in prison for that? But you know what? When our country was founded, it was founded with the idea that we're going to honor God. And many, many people gave their life for that. And that is a wonderful gift. But we're talking about a gift that's not just for Americans today. We're talking about a gift that is for every single person. It's something much bigger than you could ever possibly imagine. And so as we read the book of Ephesians, and we're going to see what God has to say for us about the big idea. idea of faith. So I need somebody who can help me out. Um, let's see. Uh, right there in the red shirt. You're looking very patriotic. Come on up. Yeah. Uh, I've got some uh, balloons up here. And inside the balloons, we have parts of the verse that we're going to be reading. Okay. Sound good? So uh, here's the thing. I'm going to give you something. I'm not going to tell you how I made this. This is what I call a professional balloon popper. Okay. Don't point it at your eye. That's the best advice that I can tell you. Now, if you can take this over to the red balloon and just give it a good pop. Drum roll on your legs. If you don't like balloon pops plug your ears here we go three two one Woo! way to go that is awesome i'll i'll take that don't take that back to your seat okay you can go ahead and grab a seat thank you so much all right let's read what this first part of the verse says from the book of ephesians, ephesians chapter two this verse is huge it says god's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Let me read that again. God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. You see, boys and girls, we all have a huge, massive problem. Not that we need to be saved from tyranny from another country, but we need to be saved from the sin that's in our lives. God created a perfect world, and the first people that he created lived in a perfect world. And God only gave them one rule. How many of you would love to have one rule? Only one. That's it. And they broke it. 
When they did that, they broke their relationship with God. But God had a plan from the very beginning to bring people back into a relationship with him so that they could have Jesus as their best friend forever. And here's the really good news. It is the best gift you could ever imagine. But here's how you receive that gift. It says what God's what? Grace. God's grace has saved you. Does it say that doing lots of really good things has saved you? No. no. Does it say going to church every Sunday morning in kids' world has saved you? No. no. Does it say helping out people who are poor has saved you? No. Those are all good things, and we should do those things. But that's not what saves us. God's grace has saved us. Do you know what grace is? Grace isn't just like what you say before you eat a meal. Maybe you do that with your parents, and you hold hands, and you say grace. Grace is when you get something that you don't deserve, and we don't deserve to be forgiven by God. We don't because God is perfect, and we are not, but God's grace, God's goodness, God has said, I want to have a relationship with you. That is what saves us, and the way that we accept that gift, maybe you've heard these four words together. This is the verse where that comes from, by grace through faith. It's God's grace that saves us, and we accept that grace with faith, with putting our trust in Jesus, that he is the one who can save us from our sins. Isn't that amazing? All right, uh, let's go on to the next part of the verse. I need somebody else who can help me out. Uh, I love with how patriotic things are looking. Yeah, right back there in the patriotic dress. Give her a round of applause. (laughs) Woo! Are you a professional balloon popper? Well, you are today. That is awesome. So if you would pop the white one for me there, drum roll on your legs. If you don't like noises, cover your ears. Three, two, one, boom. That was amazing. I'll take this for you. If you want to pick that up, I'm actually going to have you read that for all the kids to hear what it says. I'll hold this up for you. All right, everybody, listen closely because this is God's word. Your salvation. Oh, hold on just a second. Let me make sure we got our red microphone on, okay? We're not meeting on this side. We might just need to turn it up a little bit. Your salvation doesn't come doesn't come from anything you do. It's God's gift. That's exactly right. Thank you so much. You are an amazing helper, professional balloon popper, and scripture reader. That is so cool. You guys, boys and girls, this doesn't come from anything that we do. Have any of you guys ever won a sports tournament before or won a sports game? And what do you get at the end of the season when you do a really good job? You get a medal. You get a trophy. But here's the thing. You worked hard to earn those things. But you cannot earn God's grace. He's given it to you. There's nothing that we can do that would be so good that we could earn God's grace. It literally is a gift. How silly would it be? I want you to think about this for a minute as, we, as we're talking about gifts. If you were at your birthday party and you opened up all your presents, and then you walked around to everybody who brought you a present, and you got your wallet out, and you said, all right, how much was this Beyblade? Anybody still like Beyblades? I don't know if that's still a thing. How much were these Beyblades? Let me pay you back. 10 bucks, here you go. And then you walked over, now how much was this? Okay, that toy was 20 bucks, let me pay you back. Isn't that ridiculous? That's kind of silly to think about. It's a gift. When somebody gives you a gift, they don't expect you to pay them back for it. And we can't pay God back for everything that he's done for us because it is so great. As a matter of fact, as I was getting ready and I was preparing to talk to you guys about this message, I've been thinking about it for months. And I've been thinking about uh, part of the challenge of communicating God's grace is that there's nothing else like it. As a matter of fact, when when you read Ephesians chapter 2, which, oh man, when you go home tonight, you should do that. If you're going to do fireworks or whatever tonight, read Ephesians chapter 2 before you do But it tells us that there is nothing that compares to God's grace because there's nothing like it. It is that good. So I think that means that it's time for the next part of our verse. I need somebody who can help me out and pop the final balloon up here. Um, Yeah, right there in the blue shirt. Hey, I like your raised to life shirt. That is awesome. I bet you got that when you got baptized here, didn't you? That is so cool. Okay, here's the balloon poker. Be careful. Don't point it at your eye. Drum roll on your legs. Three, a two, a one. Boom. Whoa. You just like looked at it and zapped it. That was amazing. All right. Uh, If you wouldn't mind reading that for everybody, turn around and face the audience here. Yeah, it's really rolled up pretty good. I'll hold the microphone for you. 
It is not based on anything you have done. No one can brag about earning it. It is not based on anything you have done. No one can brag about earning it. You know, I, I don't watch a lot of sports anymore. I used to be a big football fan. Do we have any football fans in the room? Any Chiefs fans in the room? So there's something that happens a lot of times after somebody scores a touchdown. What do they do? Well, bam, they spike the ball. They do their victory dance. They, like, look ridiculous. And what are they trying to do? One, they're excited because they scored, but they're like, check out what I did. Woo! Right? They're saying, look how awesome I am. They're bragging about what they did, trying to rub it into the other team. You cannot brag about God's grace. We can't because we didn't do anything to earn it. But here's what we can brag about. We can brag about how good our God is. That while we were sinners, he died for us. While we were enemies of God, Jesus died for us. And we could put our faith in him. And we can have a relationship with him that'll change our life. And we'll be freed from our sin forever. Can I tell you guys a story before we open this gift? I know you guys are so excited. You want to open it. Can I tell you guys a story about when I was in about third grade? In fact, I was in third grade. Any third graders in here? So when I was in third grade, I was really into magic tricks. That's what I like doing, like sleight of hand, card tricks, and stuff like that. And I practiced them a lot. Some kids played soccer. I like doing magic tricks. And I would go to my school, and actually one time for my classroom, I got to do a magic show for my whole classroom at school. I actually have some pictures of it. My dad was there and took them. So if you want to see what third grade Cody looked like, this is me over here. Now... Uh, we've got those on the vertical back there, Mr. Jace, if you want to look on that. Check it out. That was me. I, and one of the tricks I did, it was in that blue box. It, it looked like it was empty, and then I made candy come out of it. They loved it. But I loved practicing my tricks. And one of them that I wanted to do, I wanted to be an escape artist. I watched a guy get, like, tied up and thrown in a roller coaster, and he just, like, poofed out of it somehow. So I got handcuffs like these. And you can grab a seat. I got handcuffs like these, and I would practice getting out of them. Now, these are a toy, and maybe you guys have one like this. There's a little tab on the side that you can pull the tab, and it frees it if you don't have the key. But the handcuffs I had were special trick magic handcuffs. They were from a magic store shop. And uh, I put them on. I was showing my friends uh, this trick, and I told them, get it as tight as you possibly can. Ugh. All right? Whew, that's a little tight even now. Okay, these are meant for a kid. And I, I was going to get out of it, and I went to hit the secret release button because there's no such thing as magic. It's all just tricks, spoiler alert. And I hit the release button that was supposed to let me out of this handcuff, and it was broken. Didn't work. This is how confident of a magician I was. I threw my keys away because I said I would never need them. So here I am stuck in this cuff, and it is tight. I go to my mom. My mom was leading a daycare. She had 10 other kids in our house at one time. And I went to my mom and I said, Mom, I'm stuck and I can't get out. She looked at me and said, you're going to have to wait till your dad gets home. <laughs> so this was a couple hours that I was stuck like this. My dad finally comes home. And I'm like, Dad, Thank goodness you're here. Get me out of this. My dad is like the most mechanically minded person I've ever met. He is so good with stuff like this. And he looked at what I had. And he said, all right, son, come on. We're going to go out to the garage. Our garage was detached from the house. It was actually in our backyard. And he took the handcuff and he clamped it in a vice. A vice is a piece of metal that holds and smashes things together really tightly. He put it in the vice. And then he proceeded to get the biggest honking saw he can find in that garage. And I thought, oh my goodness, my dad's going to cut my hand off. <laughs> That's not what he had planned. <laughs> he said, son, I need you to hold still. And he took that saw, and he began slowly and methodically cutting the handcuff until eventually it had gotten really close to my skin and I was really worried about it. But I had trust that my dad would look out for me. My dad cut me from that handcuff, and he freed me. I was out, able to get out of it. And sweet mercy, I hope that this button works right now. <laughs> oh, that was close. Okay. Here's the point. Here's why I want to tell you this story. There's nothing that compares to the grace of God. But I was trapped, and I could not help myself out of it. 
And we are all trapped in sin and we can't help us ourselves. We need God. I needed my dad to get me out of these handcuffs and I need Jesus to forgive me of everything I've done so I could be accepted into his family. This is the good news. As we talk about grace, getting something that you don't deserve, we deserve to be trapped. But God is so good that he's made a way, ava- uh, made a way available for us. And you know what? That good news isn't just for me. It's not just for you. It's for everyone, which is why our bottom line is that Jesus is a gift for everyone. And as a staff, we've been praying. We've been thinking about how can we help first through third graders just like you share this gift with everyone because we want everyone to know about Jesus. And so as a staff, we we came up with something, we prayed over it, and it's inside this box right now. And now it's time to open it. I've been looking for who's been paying attention and uh, who I would like to have do this. Mr. Christian, come on up. Now, I'm going to have you open up this box. And I want you to hold what's inside all the way up. Remember, this is delivered here by Hot Air Balloon. How cool is that? Okay, so here you go. You can take the lid off. What do you think? Looks pretty cool, huh? Check it out. Yeah, hold it up. Hold the other side up so that everybody can see it. I'll take the box for you there. So, boys and girls, this is what we call the Share Your Faith Starter Kit. If you've been here before, we've talked about Jumpstart. And we have some ways that we talk about what God has done for us. We talk about John 3, 16, where it says that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Some of you haven't memorized. That is awesome. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. We have some uh, things that go along with that. Keep holding that up there for me, Christian. We talk about how God loved. He loves you. And because God loves you, he gave Jesus for you. And that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So when we believe in God, we receive a gift. Now, uh, you might have seen some pictures that look like that. We have the heart and the cross. Thank you, Christian. You can go ahead and grab a seat. Actually, I want you to keep that one. That one's yours. Uh, Here's the thing is that on that wristband, there's a wristband in there, and it has a, a heart. It has a cross, it has a chair to talk about believing, and it has a gift to talk about receiving eternal life. And there's some cards inside of it that tell you exactly how you can tell your friends about Jesus. Matter of fact, there's even a card in there that tells you how you can pray with them to help them receive Christ. Maybe you've never made that decision before. Maybe you've never decided to put your trust in Jesus When you get your wristband today, which by the way, everybody, when you leave today, you're going to get one of those. You're going to get to wear it. It's for everyone. When you get that, maybe you'll talk through it with your parents. And in just a couple weeks, we have something called Jumpstart. And that's where the things that are in your packet, in your your bag, that's where we talk about each one of those things in great detail. So if you want to know more about how to make Jesus your best friend forever, I'd love for you to come to Jumpstart and bring your parents with you. But here's what I want to do right now. I want us to close our eyes and I want us to focus on God and I want us to thank God for his amazing grace giving us what we don't deserve and it's for everybody. Dear God, thank you for your great love. Thank you for your mercy and your grace and the fact that it's a gift for everyone. Lord, I pray for these kids that if there's anybody that hasn't made that decision, that your Holy Spirit would work and would demonstrate these things to them so they can know who you are. If they have made that decision, I pray that you'll help them to be bold, to be courageous in their faith, and to tell others about you, even inviting them to come to church as well. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us today for 252 Theater Online. We hope you had a great time learning about the big idea. We'd love to get in touch with you. With your parents' help, you can visit our Facebook or Instagram page to message us any questions or prayer requests. If you would like a daily devotional that goes along with what you just heard, click the link in the description box below to download a God Time card that you can do at home. We have incredible fun like this every weekend, so make sure you click the subscribe button so you can see when our newest videos are posted. 
If you have younger or older brothers and sisters, we have amazing weekly content for their age group too. And of course, our doors are open every weekend for you to experience 252 Theater in person. Have a great week putting this big idea into practice, and we'll see you again next week.